Hello everyone, today we are going to learn how to simulate stop and wait protocol and also sliding window protocol using NS2 software. So the first thing we need to do is open a text editor. So here I am opening a text editor. I am running this Ubuntu in my virtual machine. There are around 10 steps which we need to follow to make a NS2 simulation program. So let's see. So I have cre opened a text file and I will be saving it by the name stop and wait slash slide dot tcl so tcl is the extension for tcl files so i will be saving this so after saving now we have to perform around 10 steps to uh, simulate a stop and wait protocol so the first thing is creation of a simulation object first we need to create a simulator the second thing which we need to do is we have to create an animation file that is the nam file so the nam file contains all the animation details we have to create the animation file so after creating the animation file, the third step is creating nodes. So we have to create nodes so that they can communicate with each other. So after creating the nodes, we need to link them. So we have to create the links for them. So next is the creation of links. So after creating the links, what we have to do is we have to send the data. So for sending the data, we have to create uh, agents. So agents will help us in sending the data. So we have to make agents. So sending data is done by agent. So make agent. After making the agent, we have to establish connection between these two agents. So the next step is creation of connection. So we have to connect the agents. So we have to attach the agents. The next step that is the seventh step is we have to create an application. Like if we are using TCP, we have to create FTP application. If we are using UDP, we have to create CBR application. So application will run those protocols. So after starting of the application, next we have to do is we have to create a time allotment. So for which time it should send the data and for which time it should receive the data. So we have to create the time allotment. So after the time allotment, the next thing we need to do is creation of simulation. So we have to run the simulation. Last one is creation of simulation. Before that, there is another thing that is calling the finish procedure. So finish procedure will indicate that the program is over. These are the 10 steps which we need to follow to write the stop and wait protocol. So let's start. So let's follow the step by step procedure. The first thing we need to do is creation of uh, simulation object. So let me copy this uh, creation of simulation object. We have to write the program for creating a simulation object. So let me paste this command. So the command which we are going to use is set. Then we are going to use, okay, I'll let me save this file. Okay, now it has recognized. So first we have to do is we have to write set ns new simulator now what is the meaning of this so here set is the command so the ns is the object name then new is the keyword next simulator so here we have to mention what we are creating so what does this line does is it will set the variable that is the object name ns to this new simulator like we are creating a new simulator and we can access that simulator by using the word ns we can write any name there we can write our own name also so i am writing ns so set will set the ns value to the new simulator object okay next we have to create the animation file this is also done using the same set of command set nf you can give any name in the place of nf i am opening a stop.nam nam is it is an animation file extension for animation file i am giving it write permission so whatever our simulator creates so that will be uh, that we have to send to the animation file that animation file will run the animation okay next is dollar ns nam trace all dollar nf so what does this mean we have created object ns and we are tracing tracing means everyone knows that we copy the diagram we keep the paper on it and we trace the diagram same it will copy all the data of the simulation object to the nf nf is the animation file so we have given the write permission that means it will write the data to the animation file so this is the creation of simulation object okay we have forgotten to add that animation the second is creation of animation file so we have also created the animation file the second step is animation file after creation of simulator objects these two lines are for animation file okay the next thing we need to do is we have to create nodes i hope you got about the uh, about two lines next we have to create nodes to create nodes, there is a command called set object name. We can give any name here, n0. Here we are using, instead of new, we are using the uh, ns object which we created and we are creating a node of ns object. Okay. So set n1 ns node. We are creating two nodes. 
the two circles which we see in the last animation so we have created two nodes now we have to create the links between them okay so creation of links is the next part so after creation of the nodes the next thing we need to do is creation of the links we have to link those two nodes so i am creating a duplex link that so that uh, there is a two way communication at a time so i am uh, calling the simulator object dollar ns duplex link between which nodes n0 and n1 so here dollar dollar means we are dollar is used to access the object okay so dollar is the keyword to access the object 0.2 mb is the bandwidth so how much data it can carry next we have to mention how much time it should take for the data to go from nodes is n0 to n1 so i am writing 200 ms next is the q q i am writing it as drop dial what is drop dial it is an algorithm for q so everyone knows that q will be there so if the incoming data comes it will be stored in the q so what does drop dial does it? it will collect the data and store it in q when the q is filled it will drop the packets so it will look like a tail drop tail so that's the name next time orienting them so duplex link op means position uh, n0 and n1 orient right so n1 will be located to the right side of n0 the next thing we need to do is we have to create agents to send the data we have to use a protocol we should use a reliable protocol or a non-reliable so if we use tcp it's a reliable protocol it's a connection oriented protocol and if you use UDP, it is a connectionless and non-reliable. Since stop and wait is a reliable protocol, we are using TCP here, okay? We are using connection-oriented reliable protocol, that is TCP. If we use TCP, we have to create an application. So the application for TCP is FT, FTP application. So first, let us create TCP agent, okay? So, so before uh, creating this agent, uh, I have missed a line. What we have to do is we have to set the queue limit. So I said, uh, if the queue is filled, it will drop the packet. So how much queue size it should be? So I am writing queue limit has uh, 10 for N0 and N1. So there will be queue limit of 10 packets for both the uh, N0 node and the N1 node. So if there are more than 10 packets, it will drop them. Okay. Set TCP new agent slash TCP. So uh, new keyword I have explained. We have to mention here what we are creating agent that is a TCP. The thing is TCP is a root oriented protocol. Now we have to take permission from the TCP to trace its files. We have to take the permission from the TCP. So there is a variable called NAM tracer. We have to set it true so that we can trace the files of the TCP. So I am setting agent slash TCP set name traceware true. By setting this variable true, we will be able to uh, trace all the files of the TCP. Okay. So this is done. The next thing we need to do is we have to do some configuration in the TCP. Like we have to set the maximum window size and the window size. So I'll be using TCP set its window size. So window size means how much packets it packets it can send at a time. So the limitation of stop and wait protocol is it will send only one packet wait for the acknowledgement as the name says stop and wait. So I am setting the uh, TCP set window size as one. Next we have to set the maximum window size. So maximum CWND is equal to one. So we can send only one packets. Okay. We have set the uh, minimum and the maximum value. Next we have to set the receiver. So this is the uh, transmitter section TCP. Now we have to use the sync. So I am writing set sync. Sync means the receiver. Set sync new agent slash TCP sync. So this is used to create the sync. Okay, that is the receiver part. So after this, after creating the receiver and the transmitter, next we have to do is we have to connect between them. Okay, we have to establish a connection between them. We have to attach them. So creating the connection. So or also we call it as attaching the agent. So I am attaching the agents. It's dollar ns attach agent. It will attach the agent n0 to TCP. So node n0 will be attached to the transmitter part and uh, node n1 will be attached to the sync that is the receiver part. So I am writing dollar ns attach agent dollar n1 dollar n1 sync. So n0 will be the transmitting and n1 will be receiving the data. So after creating the agents, we have to connect them. So dollar ns connect the TCP and the sync. We have to connect them. Okay. 
we have added the TCP protocol to N0 and sync to the N1. Now we have to connect them. So that is the third line. Next we have to create an application. To run a TCP we need an application. So we will be creating an application here. For TCP we are using a FTP application. So set FTP new keyword. Next we have, what we have to do? We have to create an application that is an FTP application. So application slash FTP. So this is the basic command. So we have created an object name called FTP. Now we have to attach the agent to it. So FTP attach agent dollar TCP. So we are going to attach the TCP to this application. Okay. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to take the dollar NS and we have to add this agent trace dollar TCP to TCP. Now this will be performing the uh, task of tracing. Tracing means just copying. So it, it will attach the agent TCP and it will copy all the data to the TCP variable. If we want to monitor the process, we are going to use uh, monitor agent trace dollar TCP. It will monitor the activity uh, trace activity of the TCP. Also we are setting trace where CWND. This will set the congestion window as true so that we can use that also from the TCP. Since it is a root oriented protocol, we have to take the permission. We have to add an agent to trace the TCP. So we had set the variable to now we are adding the agent. Next we are monitoring that agent. If you want, we can monitor. Next here we, I am setting the CWND value as true. Trace by CWND dash means I am enabling that variable. So we can use the condition window. So this is what the starting of the application looks like. The next thing we need to do is we have to allocate the time so when the simulation should start when it should end okay so let's allocate it so first dollar ns at 0 0.1 second we have to start the ftp application so we have added the, the tcp agent to the ftp application just if we run that application the whole program will run so start the ftp at 3.0 it should end okay so we have to end it so for that we have to detach all the elements which we had attached using attach agent or add agent okay so detach agent dollar n0 tcp it will detach these two also we have to detach the n1 and the sync so let us detach it so detach agent dollar n1 and dollar sync and at 3.5 okay it should stop the simulation for that we are going to call the finish procedure so by writing finish we will be calling the procedure so procedures are nothing but the functions which we write in c so here they call it as procedure so for calling the finish procedure we have to write it let's write the finish procedure we have to write the keyword prck this is used for uh, writing the procedure then finish the open the codes and also we have to use the these curly braces as shown there also should not be a gap the syntax should be same so what we have to do is we have to flush this so dollar ns flush trace means it will clear all the tracing things which it had done next we have to close the dollar nf that is the animation file which we had opened at the starting so hope you remember okay we had written open stop dot name this will close that next we have to execute that animation file so execute name stop name is animation file stop dot name is the animation file name which we had given and it will exit so this is the finished procedure it is the end of the program now to run all this we have to run the ns2 so for that this is the command so that is the last step so let's do that so creation of simulation we have to write dollar ns run so it will run the whole ns2 simulation so let me run this open the terminal uh, ns name of the file that is stop wait slide dot tcl so let me run okay there is an error since i have typed it uh, there will be errors uh, human mistakes so in the line number 17 there is an error so let me see okay here there is a spelling mistake it is agent a g e n t i hope it's cleared now so let me run it again enter okay the program is running successfully now the thing is i'll run this program so you can see there is a sender and a receiver node. Uh, sender has sent the packets. Next receiver is uh, acknowledging the packets. The problem is we don't know who is the sender, who is the receiver. There is no name or label for this. So it's not looking beautiful. Okay. So we have to make it look beautiful. For that we have to label them. So come let's go here. We have to just label means we have to give the name. To give the label, we are using $ns at 0, 0.0. At the starting only, it should start giving the name. So at 0, $0.0 $n0 label, uh, we 
we are going to label it as the sender so dollar n0 is the sender that is the node 0 is the sender dollar ns at 0, 0.0 we have to set dollar n1 that is node 1 has the receiver so label n1 has the receiver label receiver small lateral we have to take care of the syntax here so we have given the name for sender and the receiver okay let me run this so you can see the sender and the receiver here okay sender is sending the packet receiver is acknowledging so this is the stop and wait protocol but it doesn't look nice like we don't know when the sender will be sending when the receiver is receiving it should be a user friendly like user should know when the packet has been sent when the receiver is receiving the packet so we have to show the user like what's happening so let's write that let annotate it's called annotation so come let's annotate so annotation will help the user to know which operation is happening like it is sending the packet or receiving the packet so to display that in the bottom left corner we use the annotate okay let me write dollar ns trace annotate stop and wait operation so i will be showing stop and wait operation at the beginning to show the user that we are uh, implementing stop and wait protocol okay we have to write them in double quotes now while displaying also i want the user to see the text in the double quotes but if i put double quotes now it will think it is the end of the statement so what i am doing is i will use skip character so backslash is the skip character it will skip that uh, double quotes which i have put near the stop and also at the end and it will display the double quotes also while it's printing at the bottom left so in the same way i'll be writing for uh, at 0 0.5 second what should happen uh, it should show ftp starts at 0 0.1 after that when the packet is sent we will show send packet 0 when the packet is uh, acknowledged we will write uh, received acknowledgement 0 in the same way we will write uh, for all the packets which we have sent or received so let me quickly complete this timings so i have completed the timings now let us run and see the output so i have opened the terminal i have typed the command let me hit the enter button so the simulator is running let me run the simulation so at the bottom you can see ftp started uh, send packet 0 now it's showing received acknowledgement 0 so for the next packet it's showing send packet 1 next received acknowledgement 1 so we have uh, annotated and it's displaying the annotation at the bottom left corner we have typed so many lines for just this simple animation of a packet moving from left to right so now let's sit back and enjoy the scenario Okay, enough of observation now let us move into sliding window protocol in sliding window protocol the whole code is same the only thing is we have to change the window size in stop and wait protocol we just send one packet at a time in sliding window we can set the maximum window size for example we can set as 4 or 2 so i am setting here the window size as 4 so that uh, first it will send uh, one packet two packet four packet okay so it can send four packets maximum Next we have to annotate here. So annotation is just to show to the user that we are sending how many packet. So you can do this by yourself. So let me run this now. So I have entered the command and press enter. Now I'll run the simulation. First what it should do is it should send one packet. So it's sending one packet and it should receive the acknowledgement for that packet. If the acknowledgement is received, it will slide the window and it will send two packets. See now it is sending two packets. If this is received, it will again slide the window. Now it should send around 4 packets. So it is sending 4 packets. Now it should receive acknowledgement for 4. We had set the maximum window size as 4. Okay. So it will send maximum 4. Okay. After it receives acknowledgement, again it will send 4. So the maximum it can send is 4. So this is all about sliding window and stop and wait protocol. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. Let them also learn. Thank you for watching.